Hey guys, Chris with Killer Arcade Games here. Today I'm going to be joining this free MK4 movement that's going on. If you don't know what that is, they're trying to get Arcade One Up to agree to put Mortal Kombat 4 on one of their cabinets, or even release a Mortal Kombat 4 dedicated uh, Arcade One Up cabinet that has all of the other four games on it. Part of this video is going to be explaining why I like MK4 and maybe trying to convince you to give it another shot. I'm not trying to change your mind, I'm just trying to say. If you haven't played it since it came out in arcades, or you haven't played it since you played one of the console ports, try it again. And yes, I am running this on an arcade 1UP cabinet. No, it's not being emulated. If you've seen my channel, you probably know already. This is an arcade 1UP cabinet themed to look like an MK4, but it has an arcade PCB inside. So it's the real hardware running inside. This is the real arcade version. You may have not really seen this version, like I said. You may have just played the console versions. All right, let's dive into some gameplay, and I'll kind of talk to you guys about what I like about this. So first of all, the character lineup I think is solid. It, it doesn't have everybody, and they definitely trimmed it down from Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. But, you know, there's two characters on here I find to be completely useless, which is Fujin and Kai. Some people might like Fujin. I don't know how you could ever make a case for Kai. Kai has the worst move set I've ever seen in a Mortal Kombat game. This is coming from somebody who loves Mortal Kombat 4, and I'll readily admit that. Uh, also, the boss is Shinnok, which is a playable character, and I just think that was a bad choice. I really think they should have put a real boss in the game. At least, if you're going to have Shinnok be the boss, can we just have him be the sub-boss, you know? But, that's where we are. I think he has an air throw, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see. There it is, yep. Just like Scorpion's uh, air throw, you can do press block in the air. Oh look, we both went down. Now, that's a criticism of this game. The glitchiness of it, it's not glitchy in a way that ruins the gameplay, if you ask me. You'll have camera glitches, yes, occasionally. You'll have weird things like that that don't really make a difference. You know, it's you're down, you still won. It's not like you lost or anything. Uh, you can also steal fatalities with Quan Chi. So this is Kai's fatality and his... Kai's, uh, Quan Chi's extra fatality is that he steals whatever fatality of the person he is the opponent of, or whoever's his opponent is. And so, yeah, I always thought that was interesting. So while the game is difficult, I don't find the AI to be cheating like it did, did on the other Mortal Kombat games. The AI can ramp up the difficulty, but I don't believe it ever flat out cheats like it did in Mortal Kombat 2 and 3. I have to hold a low kick for... Oh, it didn't even work. We'll just do that then. I'll change characters uh, after this next one. Um, I'm gonna be... I'm gonna be Tanya. Tanya's one that people probably overlook. I wanna show some of her combos real quick. I think she's fun. Um, and speaking of combos, by the way, that combo I'm doing there, that is a universal combo. All the combos in the game can be, or all the base combos can be done by every character. So this combo here, which is a very simple uh, four hit combo, can be done by both of them. They do it with Rico. Actually, I screwed it up there. I think I missed one. There we go. You can change it up at the ends with a roundhouse if you'd like. Uh, or you can tie in your own moves like this. And you get a six hit. You actually get more damage when you tie in your own moves. Let's see, for example. Oh, it didn't work there. I'm on the wrong side. Interesting. That may be a glitch. One of the several glitches that are in this game. So I messed up the fatality on this last one. But I wanted to show you this one. You know the Mortal Kombat 3 fatalities in 2, for that matter. Where they explode and like a million pieces of the same piece come out of them. Rib cages. It's kind of dumb, and I think it's dumb, but this one is actually a better take on this, I believe. There we go. Gives him the kiss, she backs away, he does the typical freak out. He kind of pretzels up, and then he explodes into a huge blast of fire, blood, and bits. Now the bits disappear, but it's not over-the-top silliness like before. I just want to give you guys a showcase of what this game is about. Let's go with Liu Kang versus whoever. I'll show you one of my favorite Liu Kang combos, too. And you got to do explosive combat cheat. It's just funny. The body exploding after the fight. So we get him near the edge here. Not too close. 
There it is, that eight hit combo is so satisfying, especially if you can pull it off in there. So let's talk really quick about weapons. So Liu Kang's weapon is this one. The way the weapons work is if you get hit with a good hard hit like that, you will drop them, but you can pick them back up with holding down and hit run. Same thing with the rocks. You can hold down, press run above them. They'll pick up that rock, skull, whatever it may be, and throw it at the opponent. The weapons can be deadly. Don't discount these weapons. Like if with, with Liu Kang, all you have to do is be close to him and hit high punch, just mash high punch. This'll happen. You'll get a huge 42% damage. I'm gonna throw the weapon, which is the same move you do to pull it out, by the way. Those also cause insane damage. You couldn't really tell there because he was already pretty much dead, but uh, let's throw this rock and see. That's a lot of damage. For example, here's an uppercut damage. That is almost twice of what an uppercut's damage does. So don't blow off these weapons as nothing. They're actually pretty good and they can save you a lot of times too. All right, let's get him over here. I'm gonna do Liu Kang's Dragon Fatality, which I think is improved in this version with the 3D abilities. I love that he shakes him around. It reminds me of like Jurassic Park when the guy gets picked up off the toilet. The huge blood splats that go way up and fall down later are fun too. Let's do a little Liu Kang against AI real quick. And then I'm gonna break out my big guns, which is Scorpion. He is my main on this game. He has really cool combos and all that. So I think I said it earlier, I'm not trying to change your mind. I'm just trying to encourage you like, oh, this doesn't look as bad as I recall, or this isn't as dumb as I thought it was. And heck, maybe it is. And if it is, that's fine. That's your deal there. Uh, but if you want to support this free MK movement, please consider, look at that. I love this gameplay. It's so fun and fast. Uh, please consider signing the, position, the petition. I'm going to leave it in the description below. Oh, that worked out for me right there. It's going to be in the description. Just sign the petition. It's going to show Arcade 1-Up that people are interested. Uh, a lot of people think this game cannot be emulated. It is emulated on MAME. It's just emulated poorly. And it's... I don't believe it's a hardware issue. I just believe it's a lack of them having a lot of interest in making this game work well. Oh, nice. Got him. All right. Ah, I screwed up the fatality. That's all right, though, because we're going to break out Scorpion. But I firmly believe the reason it doesn't work well on MAME, and there are big problems like, for example, one of the biggest problems on MAME is um, the fact that if you're on the two-player side of the screen, it doesn't matter if you're the first player, but if you're on the two-player side of the screen and you jump to that side, so for example, you're Jarek and you're running towards your opponent like this, the character on this side of the screen can actually run through the one player one and be on this side all of a sudden, which screws up combos, it screws up a lot of stuff. Also, you're not gonna probably be able to see this on this camera, but whoever is on the two player side of the screen will have holes in their character model. And if you look really, really closely on even this arcade version, you can see some small holes in the pixels occasionally. But on MAME, there's giant holes through the characters and you can see the background behind them. So. It's just not worth playing. It crashes a lot, too. So that's one reason I think that it would be great uh, if Arcade 1UP would actually just release it. Because then we could have the only way to play the arcade version, the only working way to play the arcade version, and they'd have an exclusive to that. You know, there's a lot of people who do want to play this, and a lot of us will just play the um, PC version or Dreamcast version. But... If you'll notice, the character models are bigger on Mortal Kombat 4, the arcade version. There's a lot more blood. Uppercuts have a ton more blood compared to the Dreamcast version. There's just so much more detail in this game that's not in the Dreamcast version. I know a lot of people love it. I did too, don't get me wrong. I bought a Dreamcast primarily for Hydro Thunder, but I was so excited to get to play this game also. There's also no load times in the arcade. Everything runs smoothly. Another fatality I enjoy, uh, you get stabbed in the chest by a giant scorpion stinger and your torso gets ripped off while blood sprays out of you. I think it's cool. A lot of people may not. I don't know why people hate on this game. Speaking of cool, by the way, how about this continue screen? There's a pit fatality at the end of the continue screen. I just think that's a great touch for Mortal Kombat. It's probably something they could have never been able to pull off in previous MK releases. Oh, I didn't get my combo. All right, this is where the gameplay is gonna get real fast because I'm getting higher up on the tower and of course the difficulty's getting higher up to match it. 
Boom! Love that stuff. When you could just pick up their weapon, throw it at them right away. I mean, you could take out a character pretty quickly in this game. Oh. Uh, I know John D is not a huge fan of this one. Apparently, I've heard him say some stuff. But John, if you happen to see this, just you know, it's it's not really all what you like necessarily, right? It's it's what the fans want. So if enough people do it, I understand it's going to be expensive, and I know you're running a business. You're not our friends here or anything, but there are people who are going to want this, and there's just some people I think who want this just to have a complete Mortal Kombat 1 through 4 in their house. Like, for example, I, I do have the arcade one-ups currently, but I have the MK1 right here, the MK2, and the 4. I don't really care that much about 3 personally, so I never bought that dedicated arcade one-up version, but there's a lot of guys who I think would love to have all four in their house, whether they're even a huge fan of the game or not. It's more of a collector's piece. I swear some arcade 1UP fans buy these cabinets simply to have interactive art to put in their house. And, and there's proof to that. I mean, it's hard to prove it, but there's plenty of guys who buy these games and are no good at them, and they never get good at them, which kind of gives you the idea they don't ever play them. They just wanted to look at it, which I have no problem with. I'm sure you don't have a problem with it either, arcade 1UP. <laughs> You know, you get a sale, you get a sale either way, you don't really care. But the AI is very fair. I think it's a really fun game, gameplay-wise, if you just give it a chance. Oh, she's beating me up a little bit. So once again, don't get confused with the AI being difficult versus being impossible to beat, which it was on Mortal Kombat 2 and 3 at times, without finding the holes in the actual AI's code, basically. This game is difficult, especially when you ramp it up. This is on the normal difficulty, by the way, on the middle tower, but it's not to the point where I can't beat it. I've beaten this game on the max difficulty, no continues. The endings in this game are the most cheesy, silly endings I've ever seen. Now, I am forgetting about modern day Mortal Kombat, and maybe this was the birth of that stuff, um, but the cheese endings are amazing. There's no more of these, like, you know, still image uh, with text endings that were kind of, you know, boring after a while. You know, we're coming off an, an era where games like Killer Instinct exist that had full motion video endings. And now we kind of have that here. Now they are rendered on the fly and it makes them a little more janky, which I like. <laughs> I mean, we, if you guys watch my channel or my live streams, you know we cannot do a live stream on the weekends without breaking out the Mortal Kombat fatality for Jax. It's silly. Oh, let me see if I can get that weapon. Okay, uppercut me, that's fine. Hold on. Hold on, I gotta get this weapon. Oh my god, I'm gonna kill myself trying to get this thing. I'm dead. Get away! Ah, oh, I do. Oh. Look at this thing. And I could freeze him with his own weapon, five hit combo, and let's get me killed. But still, a five hit combo with one of the weapons. He has one of the best weapons in the whole game, by the way. I forget what I was talking about. Okay, the, the endings. Um, the endings are cheese, so they're rendered on the fly, they're kind of janky, and they're perfect, I think. The voice acting is subpar. No offense to any of the voice actors, unless that's what you were going for. Throw in an extra uppercut there. Let's do this fire breath fatality. There we go. This fatality kind of runs like crap on the console versions because there's just too much going on, I think. And um, it runs really slow, I've noticed. So the arcade, of course, is the benchmark, so it runs perfectly on here. Here we are at the boss, Shinnok. As I said before, not a great boss. He's not that difficult because he never morphs. He has the ability to be all the characters in the game, yet he does not morph. And I don't really know why. Oh, he got me there. Now, he will get you for blocking. Like, say you block enough. Oh, wait, I want his weapon. Hold on. Oh, I got mine. That's fine, though. We'll do it on the next round, assuming he pulls it out. His weapon, you can take him out with a very easy combo. Again, mash high punch. And it will do a... a three hits will do a max damage combo on him. I'm hoping he pulls it out. And then I'm hoping I can get it from him, because he's pretty quick on this game. All right, we got max damage. Nope, I thought he would pull it out. Scorpion's weapon is junk, in my opinion. I throw it every time I get it just for the chance of getting an extra big hit. I don't think he's gonna be able to pull it out. Um, God, I really wanna let him beat me so we can maybe have a chance on the third round to see it. Come on, get me. All right, you won, big man. 
Here we go, here we go. Um, I have a number of videos on this game, by the way. That's why I, I didn't go, I decided to go with gameplay on this one, just so you guys could actually see um, what I'm talking about. I think this is super fun gameplay. He's not gonna pull that weapon, is he? Hold on. Come on, pull it out. Oh, here we go. Of course he has no life left, so whatever. He's dead. Uh, but I have a video on the history of it. I have a video on uh, this cabinet showing the insides of it. I have just tons of videos on this game because I love it. I'm gonna actually take this mic off, put it near the speakers, and I'm gonna step back and let you guys listen to this ridiculous ending. Just soak it in. By defeating you, Sub-Zero, I have avenged the death of my family and clan. Now my soul can finally rest. Your soul will never rest, Scorpion. The Lin Kuei may have been responsible for your murder, but your family's true killer still remains free. If you are not the murderer, then who is? I am the one you seek. To defeat my nemesis, Sub-Zero, I needed the power of a Spectre. You've done my bidding well, Scorpion. But now, I must return you to the Nether Realm. Never! No! Alright, so it is delightfully cheesy. I mean, maybe you guys are offended that they went the funny route on this, but if you take it in like, if you look at it as like a B movie or a joke almost, I think it's funny and it's well done. The FMV endings, the full motion video endings on the Dreamcast version were better looking, of course. Same voice acting, same everything, just done digitally with computer CGI graphics, whatever. Um, I don't know if it makes them any better or not. Personally, I kind of hoped that the Dreamcast version would have eventually come to arcades as like Revision 4, where they put a hard drive in the game so they can run those full motion video endings. But it never happened. Arcades were kind of hitting a decline then which is maybe why some of you guys never actually played it. Um, all I ask is that you at least have an open mind about it. I'm not here to change your mind, as I said. Mortal Kombat 4 is what it is. If you don't like it, you don't like it. But if you haven't really given it a shot, you may be limiting yourself on stuff you may enjoy. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the gameplay, and if you did, give the game a shot. Also, give me a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments. Do you want Mortal Kombat 4 on an arcade 1-Up? If you do, tell me why. If you don't, tell me why. I'd really love to hear your reasoning behind it. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe for more arcade content. And uh, I guess I'll see you guys on the next video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.